Hey guys, so a lot of you would have heard about the insider trading scandal over at OpenSea, the NFT marketplace. Now I'm going to tell you why this is not necessarily a bad thing like people are making out. So let's take a look at the article. Uh, you can see here, oh, for those that aren't familiar with it, OpenSea product chief accused of flip, flipping NFTs using insider information. So in very short, you can look into it in detail if you want to, but very short, what happened was OpenSea is a marketplace where people can buy and sell NFTs, right? So every so often, OpenSea will do a drop, which is they'll launch a new NFT and they'll put it on the featured section of their website. No different to how many other platforms do in the non-blockchain space. Now, what's come to fruition here is somebody was looking at the Etherscan addresses of a certain address and they found that some address was buying these nfts just before the drop would happen almost as if they knew and then they would sell it shortly after to make a profit right so they'll quickly buy it they'll wait for it to drop and the price goes up in a frenzy and then they'll sell now this is obviously classical insider trading right now it turns out and this is not fully confirmed yet that it seems to be the head of product at OpenSea. So a really big issue for the CEO of OpenSea, Devin Finzer. Now, a lot of people have jumped on this bandwagon and said, this is really bad. We knew NFTs and crypto were dodgy and we knew this was going to come out. We knew it was all a, a big Ponzi scheme. Well, no, not really. I think people are missing the point here. Just say exactly the same as how they have with the whole blockchain and ransomware. We, you know, when that ransomware attack happened, not that it wasn't a ransomware, but when that hack happened, what was it, on, on a Polygon network and the, the attacker got away with the biggest heist ever, he returned it all, right? Why? Because we can track everything. And I think this has highlighted the same thing for insider trading. The beauty is we found the person doing the insider trading and it's been nipped in the bud very early on in the life of OpenSea. Now, I can tell you for a guarantee that there is no person here who can tell me whether or whether or not Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, any of these top banks, can you tell me if somebody's insider trading there? No. There's no visibility. There's no ledger where we can see where people are buying and selling before a merger and acquisition happens. Do you think this doesn't happen? Are we naive to think, oh, uh, you know, there is no insider trading? I'm sure all of you have uh, watched Wolf of Wall Street and various other big short films and, uh, you know, where we've seen what we've seen Gordon Gecko. We know what goes on. You know, do, do we do we really think this doesn't happen? But the beauty behind this blockchain is we found this guy. Right. He, we could see it from the transaction. He would buy it this time and he would sell it this time. And we could see that. We can't see that in the open market. I'll give you another example. Apple does the same thing. Right. So Apple, when they launch a new app, they can put some on their editorial page as a featured new app. How do we know they're not getting paid for that? How do we know somebody at Apple doesn't know which apps are going to get listed on the featured page and go buy stock in that share? We don't know. Right. And, and you know, yes, the SEC can say we have things in place to try to prevent that, but we don't know. Whereas with the blockchain, with NFTs, we can actually trace that back to the transactions time stamped on the ledger, on the blockchain. You can track it all back. And that's the beauty of the system. I think a lot of people are missing the point here. This is not a bad event for crypto or NFTs. It doesn't mean the whole house has fallen down. Suddenly NFTs don't have any value. NFTs had the value because people value those things and they therefore they can buy and trade it. Now, naturally, you're always going to get these kind of bad actors in any ecosystem, environment or economy. Um, just like it's happening right now in the non-blockchain world, as we speak, there will be a form of insider trading going on right now. Now, the benefit here with this open sea situation is we've managed to see that. And no different, like I said, to the Polygon network. A lot of people are saying, oh, you know, lots of people are going to use... Um, blockchain for ransomware attacks well how are they going to get the money out it's not easy to do that as that polygon hacker found out he ended up returning it all right eventually you're going to have to take it out into uh, fiat currency in order to spend it and then then we can see it right or you could you buy a tesla with it or you buy a house with it and therefore you you interact with the real world and, and you're found right so you've got this transaction whereas if people are doing that in fiat currency how are you tracking that they, they, they swap it from pounds to US dollars to, to the euro and then back across to a rupee and then a, and then a, put it in some in renminbi. Who's tracking that when money's getting washed? No one, right? But now suddenly because blockchain has that feature, people are saying, oh, because we're seeing more of the crime happening, it means more crime is happening. No, it just means we're finding more of it. And I think this is a bit of a misnomer and a way of people to spread more fear, uncertainty and doubt in the crypto space. When the reality is... 
it's a, it's a positive, the fact that we found that this guy, I mean, in the real normal world, somebody like this could be getting away with this for years and years and years, decades, decades of insider trading people have been doing. Bernie Madoff was doing a Ponzi scheme for decades, right? So a lot of these big frauds go on for decades before they're found by the normal institution. But the fact that a, a normal citizen on Twitter could go and track the ether scan addresses, surely that's a beautiful thing. Surely that should be celebrated as a as a, a positive of the Bitcoin space and of blockchain technologies. But obviously you've got people with these hidden agendas, people who want to bring the markets down, who, you know, may not like NFTs. I personally believe some aspects of NFTs have become a bit frothy, but it doesn't mean you need to knock down the whole market. I mean, it's a piece of technology and people are going to use it and there'll be value in it and there'll not be value in it. Just like, it's like saying all apps on the app store are all bubbles. Well, it's it's the technology that somebody can build an app, right? There'll be good apps and there'll be bad apps. There'll be apps which are overvalued and apps which are over undervalued. There'll be apps which overachieve and those which underachieve. And it's the same for the NFT space. For every crypto punks you'll get, there'll be a rubbish one. And then for every rubbish one, there'll be another good one like Board Ape Yacht Club or something else. And some of these could not exist in the future. And some of these could double in value, triple in value, 10x in value over time. That's just, that's just how business works. That's how uh, the economy moves around, right? Things like that. Um, that's you, we can't have a binary way of thinking about these things. We've got to be a bit more nuanced in our approach. So there you go, guys. Just a small rant on this OpenSea headline, which I read and immediately saw a bunch of commentators trying to flip this into a negative about the crypto space. Um, the crypto space never claims that there's no bad actors. You will always get a bad actor in any in any given uh, ecosystem or economy or situation, right? It's, it's how you deal with it and how you create an environment where it makes it difficult for them slash easier to track them when they do happen. And I think that's what Bitcoin has taught us to do well using game theory and ensuring that people don't have an incentive to do wrong. So there you go, guys, my update on the OpenSea insider trading scandal. And I'll see you in the next one.